Uh, he liked to play with us all the time. Like we would have tickle contests, and we would stand in line to get tickled, and he would do it till we screamed and begged for mercy and get up, and then we run around and go to the back of the line again. And he like he was uh, very involved. He loved us very much. We knew that. So he liked to spend time with us. He was only strict in the sense that he tried to keep like worldly music out of the house and what he considered to be bad influences. He was strict at, well, I don't know, you can't call it strict, but he sacrificed a lot of his money to send us to private schools because he wanted us to have a Christian education because he felt it was so important. We went to Sabbath school and church every week. And when we got old enough, we were also able to go to summer camp in the summertime to the Christian summer camp. Schools that we went to, we had Bible classes where that was one of the subjects you were taught every day, just like one of the regular classes, all the stories in there. Yeah. Every day, you would, that was part of the daily curriculum. You have your Bible class, so you go through there and you study all the different stories in there about David and Moses and just all of that stuff that's in there. At home, every evening, we had worship. So we had Bible books, like children's story books, and Dad would read us a story every night. So we got to take turns sitting on his lap while he held the book and read the book. So we were raised our whole lives to believe all of that's true. Most of the trips he was taking, I went to high school, uh, high school, well, an Adventist Academy in California. And that was the years when he started traveling over there with my brothers. I was over there in school. So I heard about it, you know, about the trips and they were going. And I always kind of wished I could go, but he told me that since I was a female, he didn't think it was a good idea. Well, the most important thing in his life was that he loved people and he didn't want anybody to be lost. He wanted to try to prove to them what's the truth what can you expect, what's going to happen in the future. And he believed with all his heart that he knew all those answers and he wanted to share that with other people. He didn't care about the money because the things on this earth are temporary, you know, so it didn't matter. He would work and save his money and go over there and spend it all and come back and work some more. He did that for many years because when he first started all of this, a lot of people, they didn't believe that he knew where these things were, and they said, oh yeah, you're not going to find anything. And it was several years uh, after, before anybody decided, well, yeah, maybe he's onto something here, you know. But he was just very devoted to that because of people. He wanted, he loved people. I think he felt like a lot of people, they didn't think it, they don't believe it. They think it's, it's nice stories and fairy tales, and a lot of it, though, it all has to do with the doctrine that he believes too because a lot of people think, well, if you believe in Jesus and you go to church all the time, it's fine. You don't have to worry about it. You can sin, but that's not what he believed. You know, there's very strict rules in there, the Ten Commandments, and those are also mentioned in Revelation. If you love me, keep my commandments. And the, it mentions in Revelation the people that are going to be in heaven are the ones that keep those, all of them. He tells a funny story about that. Um, he had two young men that volunteered to go with him to help him work. And they didn't believe a thing that he said, but it was a trip, you know, where they could go with him and it would be interesting and fun. And they went swimming at, uh, somewhere in Israel and they were all just going into the water and Dad tripped over something in the water and it ended up being ancient burial pots. So they called, uh, you know, antiquities in there so they could take a look at it. And it was a big find. And one of the young men just laughed. And he said, well, now we know how you found everything. You just tripped over it. But he also tells people that it's, it, it would have been impossible without God's help for any man to find all this, especially him, because he has no training in this at all. What he had to go on is what he read in the Bible. And he believed it was true, and he studied all the stories, and it's very specific in there. They traveled from city to city and exactly when they did it, and so he, that was like his map, if you will, to go and just look and see what, if he could find things. I, I think that God has saved all these things on this earth to be proof for people because we all like to have something we can see and touch and feel, and then we believe it, you know. And that's why, because he said, I'm going to give them something they can see, and then they'll believe it. No, he never gave up. He, he saw everything through. 
Even if he almost lost his life, he would regroup and go back again and try it again until he got to where he wanted to be. Yeah, He wasn't afraid. He always prayed before he went anywhere, before he did anything, and he trusted that he would be protected and that God's will would be done and it would work out the way it's supposed to. He always prayed before he did anything. Before, when we were young, if we were going on a road trip, he always said a prayer first. Every day he would say a prayer, if, you, if God wants me to meet someone today and give them some information, he said that prayer every day and he'd kind of laugh about it. He'd say, sometimes you should be careful what you're praying for because it might be answered. He didn't necessarily only want to use the discoveries to talk to people, but he found that that was the easiest way to do it. Because, you know, when you're a kid, it, most people are growing up and they know who Moses is or Joseph or David or, you know, the children of Israel and the ark. And that's a good way to be able to talk to someone. And you can say, hey, did you know that this has been discovered? And most people will say no. And it's a good uh, conversation starter. It works very well. We use it now still. Dad wanted people to believe that the Bible is true. It is written by the creator of the universe and all the other worlds. He wanted people to be saved and go to heaven and not be lost. You know, because a lot of people think this earth is all that you're ever going to have and it's miserable. All you see is suffering all the time and he wanted them to know that they would, there's a better place.